Hello, my name is Anish, and in this video, I want to talk about environmental DNA detection of forest pests. Or in other words, you can think of it as a COVID PCR test, but for a forest disease. So let's talk about the insect in question. This is the hemlock woolly adelgid or HWA. It's a small scale insect uh, that uh, grows on the, that feeds on the needles of hemlock trees. These hemlock trees are uh, quite, quite big trees. They're very important ecologically. Uh, and where they're distributed, you usually find them to uh, be quite abundant. And you have hundreds of thousands of these massive trees uh, dying because of this really small insect. Now, these hemlock woolly adelgids, they can spread really fast because they're small and they can just get carried on by air currents. Uh, on top of that, they can reproduce asexually. So you only need one individual to get a new population started. So how do we manage these insects? Um, so for that, before that, we need to look at where they came from. So originally, they evolved in Asia, but around 20,000 years ago, you saw the first uh, uh, colonization of North America. And uh, these... Uh, these populations in the Western US, uh, Western US and Canada uh, really are not that big of a problem because they were introduced such a long time ago, uh, tens of thousands of years ago that the ecosystem has naturalized. Uh, the, the hemlock trees there have developed a little bit of resistance um, as compared on the East Coast where uh, it is quite a big problem uh, where you do see this invasive behavior because these insects have been introduced uh, because of human activities just in the past 100 or 200 years. And that this is where we're seeing most of the damage and mortality. So why is it that uh, it's not a problem in the West? Well, I spoke about tree resistance, but also the ecosystem has adapted. Many insects have learned to specialize on eating hemlock woolly adelgid. There is two species of flies, uh, silver flies, and one species of beetle that we will talk about a lot in this uh, presentation. So we there are four insects that we, we are concerned about, the hemlock woolly adelgid, and then the three other species that feed exclusively on the hemlock woolly adelgid. And that is because these species uh, these predators are released as biocontrol agents. So uh, uh, they are, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, collected from the West Coast and then released here in the East Coast uh, to manage the, 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 the hemlock woolly adelgid. So we also really need to know whether these insects that we're releasing, the predators, are they establishing or not? So we want to monitor both the pest and the predator in this case. And these, this really brings about the challenges, okay? It's, it's a, why, why do we need to use environmental DNA? And that is because uh, these insects are very small. So if you see this white fuzzy uh, infestation on a hemlock twig, uh, it's probably a little too late because that is uh, a symptom of, of quite an advanced uh, invasion. Um, but you really, to have good management strategy and to actually actually have a chance to, uh, to save your trees, we really need to be able to detect uh, invasions very early on. When the populations are still quite low, we can do something about it. You also uh, need to uh, look under a microscope with very trained eyes. You need a lot of expertise to be able to identify HWA uh, crawlers or their other uh, life stages. Um, and yeah, it just requires a lot of taxonomic expertise and experience to be able to identify them. So it's a slow process and it's really not scalable. Uh, on top of that, you also have the predators, which are not, are not easy to identify. The beetle looks like any other small black beetle to a common entomologist. Um, mm -hmm. and then you also have the silver flies, which, uh, uh, which also look really like each other. The two species look very similar morphologically, uh, and you again really need a very trained eye to tell them apart. On top of that, it's not the adults that are the predators. You really want the, the larvae, which are even harder to spot and even more difficult to tell apart. Now, adding on to all this complexity, it turns out that the, the, the silver flies already exist on the East Coast. Uh, they have native populations, but the native populations do not feed on the hemlock woolly adelgid. 
uh, they feed on other insects, but the Western population that we are introducing does eat our invasive insect. So we need to monitor this one population and there's really no good morphological way of telling these two populations apart. So if you find a fly on the east, you really can't tell if it uh, will eat the hemlock woolly adelgid or not. And this is where we introduce environmental DNA to help us overcome these challenges. So environmental DNA or eDNA uh, really refers to this DNA that is constantly being released. DNA is manufactured in every cell of every living organism and it's constantly being released through feces, through dead skin cells. And in this case, even maybe wool that has the, uh, the DNA of the hemlock woolly adelgid and the flies and the beetles. So all our target organisms are releasing this DNA. And so what if we can look for this DNA instead of finding the organism? So you can have a piece of, uh, a, piece of a skin cell or uh, some poop that is left behind on the foliage. And that is enough to give you uh, a confirmation that your species is there. It might not be in your sample at the moment. You might not observe it. You might be uh, capturing it in the wrong time of the year. But with the DNA, you might be able to still tell uh, its presence in a given location. So step one uh, of uh, approaching an environmental DNA study is to develop species-specific qPCR assays. We chose qPCR as the approach. And if you develop these primers, which really are the search tools uh, that help you identify the correct sequence of your target species, uh, in this case, we also have to make uh, a population-specific assays for the two uh, silver fly species, which I think is one of the first eDNA qPCR studies that has targeted uh, tar successfully targeted uh, population spe specific uh, uh, detection. Uh, step two is to develop methodology to capture this DNA from the environment. So here we take hemlock foliage, we take a few twigs, we wash them with water, then we filter this water uh, with a, a very fine pore size filter, which will capture all the cells and all the DNA that has been shared. Uh, and then we isolate and purify this DNA, and we can then analyze it using molecular methods, in this case, qPCR. So let's also look at what kind of questions we can answer, right? We can look at, okay, are these eDNA methods, this new method we have developed, is it better than the conventional methods, which relies a lot on visual uh, counting and observation and just looking at twigs under the microscope uh, to see if you if we can find our target insects. Another question is, okay, where do we take our samples from? It would be really nice if you could take our samples from the bottom of trees because you don't have to climb up a tree to get your sample. However, uh, since these insects are transmitted by air and they can fly <laughs> long distances via air currents, uh, maybe the tops of trees is where they first land and where they first start colonizing. So maybe we should take a sample up there. We tried uh, sampling at many different levels. Um, and so let's look at what we found. And this is, I think, where the you can see a really dramatic increase in the positive detection rate. So in this case, we're looking at hemlock woolly adelgid. We see the positive detection rate of visual inspection is around 23%, but that increases to almost 90% using eDNA methods. This shows that there were a lot of samples that had uh, HWI infestation most likely, but we were not able to detect it. Uh, and we're missing on a lot of samples. Uh, and we see this a very similar pattern in our predators where uh, we see a lot of detection increase using eDNA methods. Uh, again, going uh, looking at the different levels of the tree, the top, mid, and the top, we didn't see much difference in the concentration of our target species' uh, eDNA. So, uh, it's pretty safe to conclude that you can just take samples from the bottom of the tree and you can find out whether the tree has been infested with hemlock woolly adelgid or not. Thank you so much for your attention. This study now has been published in Environmental DNA Journal, so you can read more about it in a lot more detail. Uh, thank you so much for organizing this conference. Uh, and if you want to know more, you can uh, go to the New York State Hemlock Initiative uh, website and find out more about the eDNA methods and the invasive species themselves. 
Thank you.